So much for the adult mosquitoes. But in the waters, nature was still at work, creating life to pass on death. One female mosquito left alive reproduces her kind a hundredfold. Eggs into larvae, larvae into pupa, pupa into mosquitoes. In the waters, a never-ending cycle. For the fight against the larvae, we split the whole island into regions. Each region into divisions, each division into sections, each section into districts. Boundaries were carefully and precisely marked, so each worker knew exactly which places were his responsibility and which were his neighbors. The job depended for the most part on local people, on the district chiefs, each with his team. Men who knew their country like we know our own backyard. Around a convenient center, where possible a town or a village, the work was planned out on a map. Each sector represented one man's area, one man's responsibility. From a local dump, each drew his ammunition. Enough DDT, dissolved in oil, for a day's work. From then on, he was on his own. Now, though the larvae live in the water, they must breathe air at the surface. When sprayed, the fine oil emulsion spreads itself automatically, carrying with it the deadly DDT. Each larvicider, as he was called, had to spray every known breeding place in his sector once every week. Pool, stream, canal or swamp. Behind the larvaciders came intelligence squads, scouts to check that the work had been thoroughly done and to find undiscovered breeding places. As reports came in from the field, one thing became terribly clear. Though the total number of larvae was being greatly reduced, there were far too many left. Too many pockets of resistance in unexpected places. To cope with the vast areas of swamp, we tried planes, pumping out aerosol down to the waters underneath. But though they flew again and again, the aerosol failed to penetrate the thickest reeds. And the mountains had brought their own kind of trouble. Deep in thick shrub, overgrown and choked with brambles, so many breeding places were tough to reach, often impossible. For the lava ciders, it was no picnic. All regional headquarters, marshland and mountain, began to pass on the same story. Tough going and ever increasing difficulties. Then it came home to us. The job was even bigger than we had bargained for. We had to make a vital decision. In order to succeed, every drop of water on the island must be drained or cleared. Every drop of water in all the thousands of square miles of Sardinia. In July 48, we applied to the Italian government for a further million and three quarter pounds sterling from its martial aid funds. More money, more equipment, more men. Here yeah, we brought them in by the hundred. Until by September 48, Erlis was indeed an army. 32,000 men. Over 10,000 square miles, the battle was joined. Digging, ditching, burning, drying out the stagnant marshlands. The swamplands of Tortoli, Sinisola, and Totores. Up in mountains of the Livara and the Sources, hacking the tangle from the pools and dreams, rooting out the boulders, freeing the waters to wash away the larvae.
behind this army came the scouts, singly and in groups, raiding across country, patiently checking all possible breeding places. Squads searching, scouring the hills, systematically seeking out every tiny pool, every hoof print and puddle. Along the endless miles of lonely coast, on the slopes of the high Genagenta, into every hole and corner. For them, nowhere was too far, nowhere too difficult. One day, a scout comes. All right, so he has to come. He checks all the lava siding in our district. And of course, he don't come when we are there. Oh no, he makes a dip here, he makes a dip there, to see what he can find. And in one pool, what he finds is plenty. Then he brings what he finds to our village headquarters. And it is then that I say to myself, uh-huh, somebody's gonna get into plenty of trouble. He speaks with the chief. And then the chief, he speaks with, uh, what do you think? With me. And I say, what could I say? I say, Santi da Paradiso, che ci posso fare? Sono le zanzare, tu fa quello che vuoi, ma quelli sono zanzare, zanzare, zanzare. And now, after three years' work, where do we stand? Malaria's been wiped out, all right. But we were trying to do something else as well. To eliminate from a large area a kind of mosquito that had been breeding there for centuries. Have we succeeded? Well, science is not easily satisfied. So just to say that success is in sight. And we've learned things which will help in the battle of malaria all over the world. This is our village. One spring day in 1950. Down to there comes Angel, our town crier. He smiles, as he always is, when he knows something that we do not know. But this time there is special reason for his smile. This time he tells us that for an entire year there have been no fresh cases of malaria in all our province. That day we dance for all dances. Not just for my sister's wedding, but for all Sardinia. It is true that we are poor, and we may still be poor for a long time yet. But now, we are no longer sick. Now, we can fight. Now men and machines can work on the Campidana. Useless swamp can be turned into rich farming land. Now the dam of the Flumendeser is complete and many other projects are underway. A poor land and a poor people, but a people filled with newborn hope. The bad air, the malaria, 